Good evening. All right, well, today we're going to go over uh, chapter three, the cell, to be more specific here. Now, the model in front of you is actually a model representing the cell. Um, first thing that you want to notice is that the cell is composed of three major components, the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, which is all of this area here, and also the nucleus. So those are the three major components of a cell. Uh, when we look at the cell membrane, we want to remember that the cell membrane is actually made up of a phospholipid bilayer, okay? That, remember I showed you that the phospholipid bilayer had a little kink um, on the hydrophobic component of the phospholipids that actually allow for the fluidity of the cell membrane. In addition, within the cell membrane, there are cholesterol molecules that also play a role in the fluidity of the cell membrane. Um, now, if we move internally into the cell, we notice that there are a lot of uh, tiny little white dots throughout. Those tiny little white dots are actually ribosomes. All right, so um, here we have the nucleus of the cell, and within the nucleus we have actually the genetic material, DNA. And you can see the tiny little coil structures here. Now in this state, we call these, we refer to these as chromatin. So the, we don't call them chromosomes at this state, we just call them chromatin, okay? So that is where the genetic material is at the moment. Now, <clears throat> now the genetic material is within this, this chromatin, within the DNA. Now, in order to get this genetic material outside of the cell in order to make proteins, we have to produce a molecule called RNA, ribonucleic acid. So the ribonucleic acid will be produced and it will now exit, taking that imprint of the genetic material within the DNA, exit through the nuclear pores that you see here, here, and here, and now come in contact with the ribosomes that you see here. Okay, all of these ribosomes. Now, now this genetic material in the RNA can be read by the ribosome, and now we, the ribosome will be able to, with the help of enzymes, assemble amino acids into a protein. Now the protein now will be in its primary structure, and it will be folded further within the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So this is rough endoplasmic reticulum, this is rough endoplasmic reticulum as well. So are these areas as well that you see here with the little granules. And the granules, remember, those are the ribosomes. All right. Now, once the molecule, once, once the protein molecule goes through the rough endoplasmic reticulum, a vesicle is formed, which we can think of it as a taxi, where the protein is now going to be carried and delivered onto the Golgi apparatus where that molecule will be modified and packaged in such a way so that it can be again placed into a vesicle and delivered to carry out its function. All right, think of the Golgi apparatus as the post office. Remember the analogy in the example I gave you during class. Now that particular protein, it could be an enzyme, it could be a protein that is going to be used within the cell as a as a protein to be a, a, a chan to act as a channel or a, or a carrier molecule, now will either stay, like I said, inside the cell or it will exit outside of the cell. And you can think of this area here as that potential vesicle and the material, the, the protein molecule or enzyme can now exit via exocytosis to be utilized in another part of the body, all right? Um, so I wanted to review with you a little bit of what protein synthesis is all about. Now, this organelle here is actually a very important organelle, the same as this one and this one. These are mitochondria. So here's mitochondrion, mitochondria, multiple ones. All right, you can see some more down here, okay? Now, the role of mitochondria is to actually produce ATP, that's adenosine triphosphate, which is energy. And now, the energy <clears throat> that is produced is going to be produced thanks to, the, and thanks to a, a, a pathway that requires oxygen. And in the presence of oxygen, we say that it's an aerobic, aerobic pathway where 36 to 38 molecules of ATP will be produced from one molecule of glucose. And that's a very important path. Now, 
in the absence of oxygen, um, then in that case, it'll be a different pathway. We will be able to get two ATPs out of one glucose molecule, but that will not take place within a mitochondrion, okay? That will take place outside of, a, of this organelle. Um, this structure here is representing a lysosome. Remember, lysosome's task is to break down old organelles. They carry hydrolytic enzymes, and hydrolytics just pertains to the enzymes basically uh, being able to add water and breaking down um, the, whatever it is that they want to break down. They need to break down. Uh, these uh, blobs here, orange and, um, and yellow, these little circles here, these are going to be representing peroxisomes, okay? Now, peroxisomes are very important. Uh, peroxisomes are important because they detoxify alcohol and formaldehyde, and they inactivate free radicals, which is a byproduct of cellular metabolism. And remember, the cellular metabolism is this aerobic respiration, uh, and is taking place here within the mitochondria. Mitochondrion, excuse me. Now, within the peroxisomes, uh, we also are inactivating uh, free radicals, uh, like I mentioned, right? But it's converting those free radicals to hydrogen, per of hydrogen pero to hydrogen peroxide, and um, and it converts them actually to water, okay? And so that's a very important thing because now you can get rid of uh, something that is harmful. So you're converting the free radicals to hydrogen peroxide and water. Um, here what you can see is actually a representation of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is where lipid metabolism is taking place. It's the synthesis of cholesterol. This is where we make cholesterol molecules and fat and also break it down. Uh, let's see what else, centrioles. Centrioles are very important as well. Centrioles are involved in mitosis, which is cell, cellular division. And um, centrioles are actually going to be producing the microtubules that will get a hold of the chromosomes once this chromatin condenses and is more visible, as you saw it under the microscope, um, it will go ahead and get a hold of the chromosomes we line them up in the center of the cell and then pull them apart because the, the centrioles actually will move to opposite poles of the cell. But I can't really show you that with this particular model. So I hope that helps you and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.